the panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Good morning. Welcome to the Nation Beat. Today, I am here, Andrew Charles, Head of Standards Development in the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. And within the Standards Day of Activities, we felt it was necessary to look at and have a panel discussion on healthcare as it relates to the theme, a shared vision for a better world, with a focus on the third United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all ages. Health and crime are two major issues of national importance, and the high levels of non-communicable diseases in our space results in a significant reliance on the national healthcare sector. In any field, standards are necessary to achieve the highest consistency and quality of outcomes. So the topics for discussion today are the upcoming healthcare projects, which include standards development and the overall need and importance of standards in the public and private sector. So with me, I have today a group of panelists, experts in their field, basically. Um, immediately to my right, I have Ms. Ira Isaacs, the, who serves as the chair of our Health Products and Services Technical Committee. Then I have Ms. Heidi Kodra, who also serves as the vice chair of our healthcare committee. And finally, we have Mr. Niam Jabaptis, who is the performance based financing controller or coordinator, rather. Mm -hmm. First, I'll <coughs> hand it over to Ira to give a brief bio biography of herself and basically say something about herself and I'll ask her the questions. So <laughs> go ahead, Ira. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Happy to be here. So a brief biography of myself. Well, <laughs> that's always interesting. As a public health care professional, I have a philosophy uh, of quality as a love language for excellence. So mm -hmm. that is really the motto by which I work. Um, I'm a registered nurse. Uh, I would say <laughs> I love people. And having the highest standard of quality of life is the aim by which I do everything when it comes for the people, for the people, by the people. So that really is just my philosophy and who I am as a whole, as a being. OK. Thank you, Ms. Isaacs. OK, so I'll move on to Heidi Kodra Jagna. So, Heidi, can you give us an introduction of yourself and a brief bio of who you are? Okay, as you said, my name is Heidi Kutcher Jagana. I am also a nurse by profession, so you see the passion that we <laughs> share equally in mm -hmm. terms of um, improving the quality of care for all. Um, I also am a quality assurance officer at the Ministry of Health within the quality assurance unit. And um, also, again, as vice chair, I serve on your committee, yeah. your health standards committee. Um, what can I say about myself? That, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Heidi. Like Ira, I am passionate about um, improving the quality of care um, that persons receive within mm -hmm. the health sector, whether it is public or private. Mm -hmm. We know that the role that standards play in ensuring consistency, safe, and uh, an environment that will, um, I should say, facilitate mm -hmm. a, a better patient outcome. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks Thank a lot, you. Heidi. Thanks a lot for that. So, okay, finally, Niam, mm -hmm. Mr. Jabatis. Yeah, th ahead. thank you very much. So, uh, my name is Niam Jabatis. I am a, a trained medical demographer, and that's my, my qualification. But I also have wide experience working in the Ministry of Health, Epidemiology, and also um, Biostatistics, and was director of the HIV and AIDS program. I'm retired, but um, was, was given mm -hmm. another opportunity to serve um, under the government's trust towards universal health care. I'm currently the performance-based financing coordinator under that project, which looks at um, delivering uh, quality treatment and screening services for hypertension mm -hmm. patients in the primary care sector. Mm -hmm. So I hope I can be uh, of, I can provide some kind of information that would be consistent with what it is we're trying to achieve here today. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, Niam. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for that panel. 
So I'll move on to the questions. So to Ira, mm -hmm. um, can you give me some history of the development of the code of practice for healthcare facilities in general and any upcoming standards development that you may know, that you may know of? Okay. So when you look at the healthcare system within St. Lucia, one of the things we had realized, and this started uh, quite a number of years ago, um, on the health sector reform. And this is about, let's say 2006, I will put, place this date, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what we had realized about the healthcare sector is that we were seeing a set of issues and no matter what we were doing, we could not resolve those issues. And some of them were, uh, some, same as what we have today, non-communicable diseases on the rise. Mm -hmm. You had our lives booth. We were seeing that there was an issue with that. Um, just the overall health of people, but also the dissatisfaction of the public with our healthcare service. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just from the public. We were seeing it from our nurses and doctors, from the administration itself. And so what the stewards of that time and the st structure did is that they sat down and they asked, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And they came about with the strategic plan, the National Healthcare Strategic Plan of mm -hmm. 2006 to 2011. Beautiful, beautiful plan that laid out a roadmap for journeying towards quality of healthcare for all, which is the motto of the Ministry of Health, quality healthcare for all. And they ask themselves, what is quality? Mm -hmm. What are the dimension? What is this thing that we always speak about called quality? What does it mean? How do we get there? What resources do we need? And who are the persons who should be driving this? And it is based on those questions that the framework, the National Healthcare Quality Framework was developed within the department, within the Ministry of Health, the Corporate Planning Unit. And through that, we further continue to develop the National Healthcare Quality Policy. Mm -hmm. Through that policy, we laid out the guidelines of some of the strategies and the activities that we wanted to do to get not just our healthcare services, but our healthcare professionals, and our environment to a point where everyone felt comfortable, safe, receiving reliable care, and that is the love language that we're talking about. It's almost as if we took everything and holistically look at it and ask the questions, okay, what are the requirements? Because that's what standards are. Standards are basic requirements of getting the best outcome fit for purpose. So if we say we are going to do X, Y, and Z, we do X, Y, and Z, and the outcome is this, because we have set the mark. Mm -hmm. And so we did that through the standards. Now the code of practice, the healthcare facility code of practice, for instance, was driven by our need where we realized that we were, and as Neham said, he's a demographer, so he can probably speak to this, we realize that we are moving towards a demographic of people who are aging. And so when you look at the layout of our healthcare facilities, when we give care, is it safe for you to come to us? And is there a way for us to come to you? And we put those sort of things, what you call accessible healthcare, ramps, an environment that is free of violence and discrimination, an environment that is friendly, an environment where when you come to us, we ensure as best as possible that you are not just comfortable with what we're giving you here, but that you are involved in the care. And that's people-centered care. We call it people-centered approach to healthcare. Mm -hmm. And based on those, we sat down and we said, we took things like PAHO Smart Health Facilities. We look at standards from the British Institute. We looked at standards from Canada, Australia, but we asked ourselves, are these standards appropriate for St. Lucia? Because <laughs> big countries, big money, but we know that as a small island, there is a constraint of resources, and even some of those resources are time and people. Right. So we sat down as a committee, and this is how we came together as a committee. And we looked at the standards, and we asked ourselves, how can we adopt this to St. Lucia? For the cultural environment, for the people, 
with the resources that we have and with the time frame that we needed it. And that was the journey towards us creating the code of practice for the healthcare facilities, but also the code of conduct for our healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. Now, within this, best practice is that standards take 16 to 24 months of development, but again, because our resources in what you call expert is quite limited, we had to seek outside help. Now, this is where we did a collaboration with the Bureau of Standards, who also connected us to Accreditation Canada and persons such as the Caribbean Regional Quality of Standards, who have been helping us in that journey of creating the standards. That standard process is when we came together as a committee, healthcare experts, we have the Nursing Council, we have the Solution Medical and Dental Council, we have persons from various doctors, nurses, as Heidi herself. But when we sit at the table, it is not us creating the requirements and just handing it to you. We send it out for public comments to all healthcare professionals. And we ask for comments. And when you give us the comments, we go back to the table, we look at it, and we address those comments accordingly. That is the process in us developing these standards. These are what we call pilot standards for now because they are the two, and let me say St. Lucia is one of the very first countries in the OECS Regional Caribbean Islands that have created such a quality management system, that have created such standards. So we are leading what I would say a pathway towards leading the other islands towards quality healthcare for all. And so many other islands have adopted this approach so we foresee in the future when we continue with these standards developments, and other standards developments such as medical tourism, that is something that has been on our table. Um, also, clinical guidelines. How do we give care in a manner which what is happening in the public sector is also happening in the private sector? It's not that when you come to us and you go somewhere else, you get different care, no. We want everything to be standardized. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so that's that's really the vision by which we are having and going. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, Ira. So what I'm getting from your discourse is that it's a, a holistic view, mm -hmm. and it's also a very consultative mm -hmm. process. Not just consultation of technical experts, but consultation of the the nation mm -hmm. on the whole, the public, to give their thoughts, give their feedback on the standards mm -hmm. development of mm -hmm. the healthcare se sector. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot for that, Ira. You're welcome. Excellent. Um, I'll move on to Heidi. Um, Heidi, the question for you is, what do you think of the development of the national healthcare quality policy, and what is its applicability to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3? Okay, thank you, um, Andre. The Ministry of Health has made significant strides since the development of the national healthcare quality policy. And um, this policy created an avenue to improve the overall health system within the country by providing guidance to the national strategic health planning. Um, as such, the Quality Assurance Unit was developed to support the core goals and principles of the national healthcare policy and ultimately aiming to provide accessible, affordable and high quality care to all St. Lucians. Mm -hmm. And um, the policy is closely linked and it, it does support the UN SDG3 um, goals, um, such as focusing on ensuring health and well-being for all and for all ages. So when we, if we have to break down the SDG3, we see different components, SDG 1, 2, 3, 4. And um, when we look at the national healthcare quality policy, it basically encapsulates everything, all areas such as accessibility to healthcare. Um, so the national um, healthcare policy, it actually prioritizes, it prioritizes and outlines um, to ensure equitable access mm -hmm. um, to healthcare services. And this aligns with the SDG3 aiming to achieve universal health coverage, which includes accessing the essential services for all. And I must say that um, if you look at most of the, the districts or the regions, we have healthcare facilities. We have about 33 healthcare facilities that persons can access within their um, communities. So making it accessible for 
those persons who cannot necessarily go to the private sector to a private doctor or cannot afford to go to the hospital to see a doctor, the Ministry of Health has made it available um, to them, accessible, and like Ira said, again, partnering with PAHO and SMART, making it accessible, um, wheelchair access as well. So you find most of the facilities, we have included ramps. Mm -hmm. right. um, and we have been working on the, um, the like toilets for disabled persons. Mm -hmm. right. So we are working, and again, as Ira said, looking at standards. And we know now that um, the role that standards plays in achieving overall health for all. Um, in terms of when we were looking at the health, the standards for the healthcare facilities, we understand now that any new facility that is being built has to follow particular standards. Mm -hmm. Okay? And simple things that persons may not look into, such as the size of a door. The size of a door cannot be the same as when you're entering your bedroom. Mm -hmm. Because we're looking to service all persons, whether it be on a wheelchair, whether it be on a, a, a trolley, a gully, whatever it is, that person should be able to enter that room freely. And um, moving forward, we look at the SDG 3.2, where the reduction of preventable deaths. And the policy also highlights the importance of the development of standards and guidelines to reduce preventable deaths for improving quality um, of care, such as early diagnosis and infective treatment. And looking at that, we see that um, we have made strides and thankfully for the World Bank who has been funding our initiatives, the ministry's initiatives, and Mr. Nehem will continue along <laughs> with that when we, when we get there um, in terms of the, the progress that we have made. Also, we look at the universal health coverage, SDG 3.8, which Mr. Nehem also will um, expand on. Mm -hmm. And we see that we started out in phases, and one of those phases was the maternal mm -hmm. and child health, which mm -hmm. is the first phase. And um, because of that, we're doing a lot of testing um, and uh, ultrasounds throughout for the duration of the pregnancy. So basically, we have that monitoring in place to capture whether there's anything going on mm -hmm. and that effective treatment can be given to reduce the, the incidence of deaths, mm -hmm. of um, stillborns and so on. So we have been making strides and this is just the first phase and um, we have a lot going on right now at the Ministry of Health. We are presently looking into the prevention and management of, um, of CKD, um, that is um, renal failure chronic renal disease, we're looking into preventing that. And this is where the screening comes in and also Mr. Um, Neam's department, that's where they come in, in, the prevention aspect of it. And we're also progressing slowly to um, cancer screening as well. So basically, we as a ministry, we are being proactive rather than reactive. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of patient safety, the SDG 36, we have been working tediously, and uh, this is where our partnership is, has basically grown with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards in understanding um, that where standards, the role that standards play, such as the risk management. Okay. And um, you know that we have partnered, we have been working together to actually execute that training yeah. within our. Um, Ministry okay. and by extension, our other stake health um, holders, the St. Jude's Hospital, the OKU Hospital, and the other um, okay. so facilities. Okay, so thanks a lot for that, Heidi. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, again, the general idea I'm getting here is the quality of healthcare is extremely important, and access to healthcare for all is extremely important. Yes. Thanks a lot. I'll move on to, to Mr. Jabaptis. Mm -hmm. Niam, we know that money is important an important resource to make anything happen. So again, what is performance based? Oh, okay. The okay, so performance, so okay. It's a, a break right now. Oh, we're yeah. a break. Okay.
I actually thought it was going on to the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's actually why I stopped you. Sorry about that. No, that's Suicidal fine. Suicidal yeah. thoughts, like other oh, mental health challenges, can affect anyone. It can be you, your colleague, family member, or neighbor. Everyone has a role to play in preventing suicide. Know the warning signs. If you or someone you know is in crisis or emotional distress, call the suicide hotline at 203. Remember, help is available. This is a message from the Employee Assistance Program, Department of the Public Service. Contact us at 468-2269 or 468-2260. Welcome back to Nation Beat, and uh, thank you very much. We we're moving on to Mr. Naim Jabaptis. Mm -hmm. The question again, because finance is extremely important in any endeavor, we're going to look at finance and healthcare. So the question I have for you is, what is performance-based financing, and how does it aid the application of a more successful health regime? Right, thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, Performance-based financing really is a mechanism, if you want, or you could call it a methodology mm -hmm. uh, that is used to strengthen health systems. Mm -hmm. The difference between performance-based financing and traditionally what we're doing is input financing. Mm -hmm. So we finance staff, we finance equipment, we finance the things that we need to deliver our outcomes mm -hmm. and our outputs. Performance-based financing actually finances the outputs at this stage, and what are, what we, when it's the outputs, we're talking about those things that, that we do. We use the equipment, we use the staff, we use the activities to get out of, out of, out of our programs. So in our case, for example, we, the main outputs for, for our performance-based financing program is to have, for example, persons treated according to the guidelines and protocols. We'll pay for that. Mm -hmm. To have persons screened according to the guidelines and protocols, we'd pay for that. Mm -hmm. To have persons registered, we're going to pay for that. So, 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 so we, we are very specific. Uh, we have indicators to indicate the outcomes that we're looking for, and then we pay for it, as opposed to paying for staff and paying for equipment, what we, which we're doing traditionally. Right. Essentially, that is the difference. So it's, it's a difference moving from input-based financing to output-based financing. How we hope to mature in the future is to move from output-based financing now to outcome-based financing. So here you will now finance, um, pay for, 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 for a person to get better, pay for a person, for a person to live longer. You know, but that is, that, that is future for us. We're doing everything in steps. Mm -hmm. You cannot just, just jump into an, out, into an outcome. You first have to have certain outputs there. So we're starting here, financing that. When we have developed the culture and the information that we need to, then we can go and mature further and, 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 and advance in our universal health care thrust. So that's, that's basically the difference um, between performance-based financing and some of the other traditional financing that we have been doing. Okay. And again, so looking at the application to a successful regime, what I'm getting... Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, the second part of the question. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is very... Because it calls for reforms. I, I already spoke a lot about reforms. Mm -hmm. The thing about where we are here today, we did a lot of work in the past. Mm -hmm. And let me say here, it was not, it was not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. We did not achieve what we had to achieve maybe in the past. First of all, I think, I think a lot of people thought universal health care is just like a, a cross-sectional thing. You just come and you just do it and you get universal health care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we have done visits, uh, tour, tour, tours to countries who have been implementing universal health care 25 years, 15 years, mm -hmm. and they are still learning and they are still reforming. So the decision to move to universal health care in steps is critical, it's, and it's the best decision that we could have. So we started, we start with what we have. And then we work on what we have, and we have a, but we have a goal for what universal health care, what we want to achieve in universal health care. We all know essentially universal health care is a package of services. You cannot deliver everything. You need to have those services that you, that, 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 that you need to deliver to your population based on needs, epidemiological, demographic, and other needs. You need to have those services, and you also need the financing mechanism. Right. Financing is always important. 
what the PBF is doing now is trying to provide lessons on how we could, could end up with something that we could afford. You know, something where our people is participating. Something that is not just at the national level. Something starting from the level of the community. Because we're starting from the, from the, 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 the catchment areas. So we're going to reform the way that we do, we, we deliver care. Um, one of the things, when the, when the first design we got of that program, it didn't have a quality component. We had to put in a quality component mm -hmm. to make it a part of it. Right. And we are working with all of the quality teams in the country, including the Bureau of Standards, right. um, that is going to look at that program, uh, come counter verify uh, the data, look, at, look and see if indeed there is quality. And of course, it's going to be based on on the CAFA guidelines, the, the same thing, um, um, all of the guidelines in the past that we had used. Right. You know, so now we have to update the guidelines, we have to monitor the guidelines. It is not easy work. People cannot just say UHC and just believe it's easy work. It's not easy work. We have to do the reforms. Mm -hmm. We need to do the reforms. We need to create the environment within which we could successfully operate universal health care, delivering quality care to our patients, but also knowing what's going on knowing what's going on in terms of having the data, having the right staff mix, mm -hmm. having all of the different components of the health system in place. The financing, governance, right. getting the, the supplies and everything across uh, to ensure that all of that, you, you arrive at the outputs and the outcomes that you, you, you really have, have planned for. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's a work in progress. It will always be a work in progress. Yes. Countries, uh, <laughs> I mean, Korea is doing that for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Colombia is in 15, and they are kind of leaders in the world at this, uh, at this stage, right. and they're still learning. You know, so it's a long journey. It's not, it's not, it's, it's step by step by step, and the approach the ministry has, why diabetes and hypertension? Because these are the, great, the two greatest killers in the country. Mm -hmm. Hypertension is often under, underestimated as a, as a cause of death, but it is a significant precursor for things like heart disease, mm -hmm. yeah. strokes. So we have to control it. We have to control it if we have to reduce the premature mortal mortality that we're supposed to be doing under the SDGs. So, so um, I, I am very honored at this time, you know, to, that I could still use my skills, you know, to, 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 to serve my country. You know, it's, it's a very honorable thing. And when I, anytime I talk about the P, the performance-based finance, I'm very passionate because a lot, I spent a lot of years in data and diabetes and hypertension was, was where we always had a, a lack of uh, because it's a lot, it's a huge undertaking. Right. A lot of people, 19%, uh, I think 19% of our population uh, is suffering from, from, from um, diabetes, for example. You know, I mean, we thought it was like, 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 like 10%, but it's, it's, it's as high as 17 to 19%. Yeah. So, so if we don't do something now, now, we, prob we will be probably aiming for a quarter of our population with diabetes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, 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 so that's it. And prevention in the mm -hmm. primary care setting. If we do prevention well, then the hospital will have less burden. Right. So, so that, is what, that is the focus now, at least for the next year and a half. It took us almost two years to get the structure in place. Right. That's the other thing. You, we cannot do quality if we don't have a structure. We cannot do quality if we don't have quality police or quality inspectors. We need to put all of those things in. We're not talking about quality and then we have not yet defined it. I mean, I, I, you know, we have to put in the structure, we have to know about it, and we have to practice it. Right. You know, small steps, and I think once we can do it that way, we probably would be in a much better way to deliver quality care. When we say quality care, we want to be able to define it. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to monitor it. We will be able to measure and say, all right, we have achieved quality, we have achieved quarter quality, half quality, or whatever. Right. So these are the things, that's where we're aiming. That's how we have to go for it. You know, and it's, it will take us time. That's the thing we have, to, we have to understand. It will take us time. We cannot do it alone um, in the ministry. We have to involve the community, involve the people. Let them understand it and then even give us solutions as right. well. You know, but so for now, I, I, and again, the World Bank is the World Bank is very big on this and really trying to get us to mm -hmm. to change our culture and to, to understand. And I'm I'm talking about organizational culture, not <laughs> our culture. Change our culture towards moving towards more information, towards more quality, towards more doing things uh, objectively, looking at effectiveness, looking at efficiency. All of those right. defining these in terms of very simple terms and and terms of data, so that we can see 
see actually see progress and measure progress okay you know so that is that is in a nutshell what um uh, and I hope in saying all that I answered, but I'm <laughs> always very passionate on yes, it. So yes, that that is right. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, yeah. So, so again, what what I'm getting from that, and there's a lot of commonality in, in yes. all of what you guys yes. are saying. It's really that, um, again, from your discourse a while ago, the performance base and the PBF performance based financing is looking at not just the money, but looking at a projectized approach, mm -hmm. yes. inputs, processes, yes. outputs, outcomes. Yes. Outcomes, right? that's it, yes. yes. And then looking at that, and again, being realistic up with it, yeah. not looking at it where, okay, this is going to happen tomorrow, but saying tomorrow will come, then it's next week, then mm -hmm. it's next month, then exactly. it's years down the line. Exactly. Again, being very realistic to what are the outputs and what are the outcomes. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at it like that, when we, we follow that model, that, that projectized mm -hmm. approach, and again, I heard the quality re resonating, with, mm -hmm. uh, resonating with Heidi, resonating mm -hmm. with yourself, mm -hmm. Neil, mm -hmm. that when we look at that approach of incorporating quality, having that repeatability in the care, looking at access to the care, mm -hmm. looking at the standards to the care mm -hmm. on a long-term basis mm -hmm. of not just starting yesterday, but information from quite yes, way yes, back, yes, yes. utilizing those That's metrics right. and getting to yes. an end point. I'm saying end point almost in, in quotation marks because mm. that end point is a continuously learning end point. So it's always moving further and yeah. further, constantly yeah. progressing. So let me continuous improve. quality yeah. improvement. That so is that's right. Right. Thank you. So uh, that's I, the, that's that's the, the continuous. I was going to bring. It's you know? We mm. actually use the term continuous quality, quality improvement. Right. Um, CQI. And continuous quality improvement says, and I'm going to add to the wisdom of Neham and Heidi. Right. Continuous quality improvements has what you call a methodology to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's a roadmap, yeah? Plan, mm -hmm. do, check, mm -hmm. act. Right. Mm -hmm. You plan what you have done. You mm -hmm. plan what you are doing. And sometimes in the planning, things change. Right. As you're doing it. So, so you need to do. check it. And when you're checking it and you realize, oh, this is not working, mm -hmm. I need to go back and fix or change or add or take out, then you mm -hmm. act on it. Right. And that's a continuous cycle. It's a cycle. Continuous so. cycle. So it's like you never finish going. We do not believe in perfection. Mm -hmm. We believe in fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say what we plan for and the outcome that we desire, we are getting it. Right. And then when we get that outcome, we grow. Mm -hmm. So we, don't we, we, don't, we, we call it, we don't hang our hats where we cannot reach it. Right. We make it very realistic to our environment, to our people, to our resources, mm -hmm. to what we can do. Mm -hmm. So we're not putting shoes that we cannot wear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Yes, mm -hmm. we do not put shoes that we cannot wear. And so in the wisdom of Nahum, when we looked at the outcome, we asked ourselves, so where is the value for money? Mm -hmm. evaluation. And that value for money, where it's our evaluation, which is our monitoring value, because when we're planning, we're doing, we're checking, that's the monitoration side of it. But when we go to the evaluation side on our outcome with our value for money, when we get there, then is when we're going to say, yes, we have accomplished. And here's how we accomplish this. Now, in quality, <coughs> before quality was used in products, and people aren't products, but we are a product of our society. And there's no such thing as poor people or sick people. It's really poor opportunities and poor resources. And so when we looked at it, we said we are going to give them the best that we can now exactly. for the outcome of where we want to go and see for them now, going. Yes. <laughs> because healthy people is a healthy economy. Nation. And a healthy economy is a healthy nation. So it isn't, we didn't just sit at the table and, and decide that we wanted to be like the big countries meeting international standards. No, we, we care for our people, we care for our people because we are the people. And we are the very standards that we set. We use the system. We live in this system. We no longer breed people, we brand people, meaning to say, this is the vision we have for you. We are going to help you to get there. That's the loving us. We don't make sacrifices. We do sacred duty. Right. That's what we nurses say. This is not a sacrifice. It's our sacred duty to the nation and the people. 
So when you look at the sustainable development goal and you look at the performance-based financing, we are all moving towards a healthy nation. Mm -hmm. What does it require for us to be a healthy nation? These are the input, the, uh, well, as Nahum said, this is the input that we need. Based on the input, okay, before we were doing input, but it wasn't working. Okay, so what's the output that we need? This is the output. So where are we going? That's the outcome. We have a vision. We know where we're going. We're just taking it step by step. Plan, we're doing it. We're checking to see if what we're doing is actually correct, and then we're acting on it as we go. Mm -hmm. That's our passion. It's for our people. Look at the age of Neham. Neham have retired, but he's mm. back here with us. <laughs> yes. That's the leaders. That's the footsteps that we're following in. Yeah. The young people like ourselves, you know? So it isn't that we are putting things in place and sometimes we ask. We know we ask our patients, how was the service today? And you say, nurse, I don't like the waiting time. Believe it. We go back and we ask ourselves, yes. how can we cut down on this waiting time? Right. We don't, we, 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 we don't think that you're out there sitting and drying and we, we, we think that it's okay. No, we, we feel it too. We feel it too because we, we are the same like you. Yeah. 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 And, and that is where, again, the Ministry of Health, um, we have understood the importance of where quality stems from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have taken a patient-centered approach. Yes, yes. And uh, we have a committed team at the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. We have the minister who is passionate about health care. We have our PS, our DPS, the CMO. We have the other units that make up our ministry, corporate planning, the quality assurance unit. And we recently had, it's been about two or three years now, we've had the non-communicable diseases unit. So we have understood how we cannot just deal with um, illness and diseases on the whole, but sometimes we have to break it down and we have to focus. And um, taking that approach, um, the quality assurance unit, we have embarked on doing patient satisfaction surveys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the purpose for this surveys is to understand what is really going on on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we can understand what is really affecting whether it is the delivery of care or patient outcome. And for that, we focus closely on the primary care setting because we recognize that we have to start here. Mm -hmm. We recognize injecting all those monies in treatment will not solve the problem because we'll continue to have a sick nation. Where and our focus them. is right now is a preventative approach, mm -hmm. okay. management mm -hmm. and for that to happen, we need the standards. We need the guidelines mm -hmm. that not only the private, the public sector will follow, mm -hmm. but the private as well. Uh, the Ministry of Health has been engaging the, the private sector okay. also because we, we need their input as well. We provide service, they provide service, but at the end of the day, it has to be seamless. Mm -hmm because the care has to be continuous, like Ira rightfully said. Right. When a patient is seen in the primary care setting and they're referred to secondary care, whether it be surgery, whatever it may be, and they go back home, they go back into the community for continuum of care at the primary care setting. Mm -hmm. So this is where we have noticed that the, col the collaboration with not just the primary care setting, but the collaboration has to be with public, private, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. We need an interdisciplinary approach to treating whether it is illness or disease so we can have better patient outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, um, Heidi. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot for that, I Ira, also. Um, again, so we'll go to a break right now, and we'll be back very shortly. Thank you. I feel like if it is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security, it's our prosperity, our future. The enhancement of the efficiency of production distribution supply chain in the fruit and vegetable sector project, more commonly known as the Seven Crops Project, is intended to increase local production of all selected crops and decrease our food import bill through the diversification of the agricultural sector and increased production of the targeted crops. 
Among the provisions are subsidized input sales, seedling distribution, introduction of new varieties, introduction to new technology, erection of weather stations, and capacity building. For more on the Seven Crops project, contact the project coordinator at 468-8122. Welcome back to Nation Beat. Again, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and our healthcare professionals right here. We're going to wrap up now with our discussion and quite an engaging discussion also on our healthcare um, standards in the healthcare, performance-based financing, quality, and what those things truly mean to our healthcare. So what I would do after that very engaging discussion from Ira and Heidi, very engaging, I'll now hand it on to, to Naam, to you Naam, mm -hmm. to, to sort of wrap up and give us an idea of moving forward, how do we see this, this healthcare system and what, what, what do you envision for the future? For the future, I, 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 I have um, one small acronym, UHC. Universal health coverage okay. is our future. We have been, we've been grappling with it for 20 years. Uh, I think um, over the last two to three years, from three years and with the involvement of the World Bank and, and now imagine we have involvement of the Bureau of Standards, a more intimate yeah. for want of a better word. Um, I think if we give it the chance, if we give it, if we continue with it, we should have this policy that no matter which government comes in, we have a universal health care, health coverage goal that we work in towards. If not, it means that we're going to start from scratch every time. So I think now um, that we are learning about it, we are learning from other countries, we are starting some of the reforms through the PBF and through and, and, and now strengthening our quality and, and, and with inputs, of course, from, from the... I think we're in a much better, better, have a much better way. What I would think the future, for us in the future, let us develop... Um, because one of the things that we noted in those countries that that the data, the data was key to everything because it's the data that you, you need to, to, I have a bias for data, but, but I really saw that at work uh, in that in every one of those countries, there was one particular organization or institution responsible for the data. So they took the data burden from your heads of department. Mm -hmm. You took it from even the ministry and you have a somewhere that gives you the requisite data that you do need to do the information because you need the data for the quality, you need the data for the financing, you need the data for, for, the, for, for bringing, bringing in your, 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 your um, products, you need the data for the staffing, you need the data for everything. And I think we have to seriously, seriously think about giving us the information that we need for us to progress and for us to be able to measure and to know when we have achieved universal health care or any other outcome that we want uh, in that regard. That's what I will want to leave okay. with us. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that, Liam. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So again, we, we're seeing the importance of, again, a, a quality approach, yes. and a project approach where we're utilizing the metrics. The measurement is That's, extremely yes, important. metrics, very important. Very, you very, very important. objectively know where we are? Yes. To know where we're going to? Exactly. Again, utilize the measurements. Yes. So yeah. again, thank you guys, thank you all guys very much for being here. I think I could say in conclusion that the commonalities that we're seeing from all of this discourse here, again, the importance of standards and the longevity of the information that you've sourced from previously, mm -hmm. the quality-based approach and the importance of the quality-based approach and the accessibility to all. And then the performance-based financing. Money is very important to make anything happen. So how do you get the resources? How do you mobilize these things? And what is the realistic viewpoint of getting to those areas? Mm -hmm. So almost in summary, this is, this is how I, I could think I could encapsulate what you guys have, have said today. And mm -hmm. the passion, I clearly see the passion in each of you all mm -hmm. of healthcare why it's there, why we want to improve it, and why do we want to continue improving on it. Mm -hmm. And with that, <clears throat> I'd like to say thank you very much for um, being here today. Thank you very much for sharing your mind, sharing your passion, sharing your thoughts on this very important subject. And 
I would like to again even thank the audience additionally mm -hmm. because again mm -hmm. this is not a one person or set of people speaking to this is a, a collaborative consensus based approach this is all mm -hmm. about not just the experts who are here today sharing their idea but the public also giving back and saying this is what we want to see as an improvement this is what we think about the service or the facility that, that, that we're using and engaging. So with that, again, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all. And again, signing out of Niche and Beat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great.